Hey guys, this is Telip. Uh, today I've got some 3v3 videos with Reinstall, Nex, and myself against Chili and her teammates. It's a lot of fun. I don't usually get to play 3v3, so I enjoyed it. Uh, the topic for this video is going to be Striker and why it's overpowered and why you need to know why it is overpowered. Uh, but before that, I want to touch on a couple other things. Uh, first, I want to mention the survey system that was added last night's patch. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a a good way to reach out to your community and find out their, how they really feel about the game. But what's up with the questions that were asked? I, I don't understand what, what it is they're looking to find out. They asked how you felt about Rin, and then the choices were she's pretty, she's balanced, she's meh, or I don't know. What are you going to find out about about the character with this? I mean... She's pretty means what? Like, you like the design? Well, that's a question in, in and of itself. Do you like the design? Yes, maybe, I don't know. That's, a, that's its own question. You can't just add one answer for a different question. That's, that's weird. I, I, the question about whether or not she's balanced is clearly a question for PvPers. Well, but that's a question. Like it's, instead of it being an its own question like it should be, it's an answer to do you like Rin. That doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how they're going to get any any important information out of that. What are they going to find? The only question on the survey that I thought was good was um, the question about demographics. Do you consider yourself a hardcore dungeoneer, a casual dungeoneer, a hardcore PvPer, or a casual PvPer? That was like the only one that would actually give them any useful information. So I, I don't really know what they're go where they're going with that. I hope it's a little better next time. Otherwise it's just going to be another kind of useless system. Um, the second thing I want to talk, I wanted to mention is if you haven't already, go to the forums and support JRT7's uh, suggestion to reinstate the Cannabis Coliseum. Cannabis Coliseum was a fantastic game mode for PvP, and it's something that any competitive game should have, and it, it could single-handedly revive Grand Chase's competitive PvP scene. It, it would be enormous if that were to be reinstated, so go support that if you haven't. Alright, so, talking about Striker. Most people think Striker's overpowered because it does a lot of damage. And, I mean, that's a part of it, but lots of things do lots of damage. That's that's not a very accurate uh, thing to say. Striker... Strike, well, the reason why Striker is overpowered can be summed up in one sense, and that is there's no consequence for failure. Striker is the most airtight class I, in the game, I think. It's got a safety net bigger than the moon. Um, everything you do is basically insured against you being punished for it. And it's not just specials, it's not just playstyle, it's kind of everything. Uh, for example, we're just going to start with specials just because they're easy, easily identified. The one bar has... there's only one move I can think of off the top of my head that has the same delay priority as the striker one bar. And when I say delay priority, I mean... What delays first? How quickly it delays after you activate the skill? And for Striker, it's nearly immediately. The second you release that MP, you have you are invincible, and nothing can knock you out of it like you can in say Knight's One Bar. Um, the only skill I can think of is SK's Holy Bless. I'm sure there are more. I just that off the top of my head, SK's Holy Bless, and then that only works if you combine it with Rune Spiral. It's the only single skill that I can think of that will allow you to hit a Striker after they've started their One Bar where lots of other classes don't have that security. And then the one bar itself does a huge amount of damage. I mean, it's as much as, if both hits connect, it's as much as the geese as one bar. And then um, that's dealt in only two hits. So even if you counter, you're still taking a large amount of damage. Then the you are invincible the entirety of the skill from the second you start to the very second you end. And you are also moved a good, good distance when you use it. So you have so much you have all of your bases covered by using this skill. The risk versus the reward of trying to attack a striker after they one bar is is nowhere near worth it. They could one bar again, they could you could miss, they could hit you. I mean, you're not you're, the odds of you coming out on top of that are not very high. And so most of the time the best thing you can do is just leave if the striker one bars and that's that's enormous. You know, you're in a tight spot, you don't have a good way out, so you one bar and you're safe. It's a lot like PK's one bar old one bar in that sense. 
Um, and then there's the two bar, which I think most accurately epitomizes the problem with Striker. Of course, I shouldn't say problem. It's not necessarily a bad thing that the class is airtight. It's a bad thing that it's airtight and has the enormous damage output that it does. Um, the two bar is the single easiest spawn kill in the game. You can do it at any time after they spawn and you will get hits in. And then you can combine it with a one bar for more damage. And you, you, you're pretty much, you, aren't, you aren't subjected to the risks that other classes are when they try to spawn kill. Because when another class tries to spawn kill, if they miss, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Chances are they've used most of their MP on the spawn kill and they they miss a skill. They're more vulnerable than they can ever be after they miss a skill. Especially with no MP. But a striker, you pretty much can't miss. Um, so you're going to get that and you're going to be able to do that and then leave afterwards without having worrying about retaliation because your opponent's on the ground recovering. Uh, and so, you know, the, plus it gives you a good chance to set up for your next attack. Um, the third bar, it's a third bar, there's not much to say about that. Oh, uh, also on the second bar. You ever try to grab a striker when they do second bar? It's got the right delay that you can and should be able to grab them out of it. Doesn't work on striker, they just keep going. You you are safe from the two bar, but then you're just going to get wrecked the second he comes out of his second bar because he's going to come out before you, about the same time you finish your, um, your, finish your grab and he's going to be ready to move and you are not going to be ready to move and it's going to hurt. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, even if they use it at a time when they should be grabbed out of it, they're fine. Um, so then you move on to their playstyle. Every attack is a huge amount of damage. That, I mean, that's fine in of itself, but combined with the striker playstyle, which is built on momentum and a lot of back and forth type of things, um, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed two things. One, even if they hit you, you're probably going to get the hit, because you are moving constantly. That means even if you get hit, you, I mean, with a tiny bit, with the normal amount of server lag, they're going to get hit too. Um, and that was much to my theory when I was practicing Rin, or Lin, or whatever her name is, against uh, Nexus Striker. He al almost always got the hit, even if I knocked him over, and so that stopped me from doing anything else afterwards. And then the second part of that is even if you do get hit and you do not get the hit, your momentum is going to carry you past any kind of danger. You're not, they're not going to be able to start a combo on you because you're going to be carried past it by your own momentum. And you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to get up and continue what you're doing. Um, then there's the teleport, which has a high enough vertical range that allows you to dodge deep impact, keys to 3-bar, uh, AR 3-bar, everything. It also allows for a greater vertical movement. And, you know, you're pretty much clear from all those things that uh, most other classes have to worry about as well. And then there's the huge damage on the regular combo combined with the teleport. So why is it important to know these things? Well, the answer to that is the more you un understand about the class, the strengths, the more you understand about their strengths, the more you're going to understand about their weaknesses. Um, now I'm not going to tell you what those weaknesses are because I haven't thought that far through it. I just play the game. I just fight strikers best thing you can do. But if you know their strengths, then you know what to watch out for. You're aware that you cannot get these combos, and so you won't try, and it will lead to less mistakes on your part. There is no real sure way to beat a striker except for breaking their momentum, and that's why classes such as Lyre or Arme or um, Amy are effective against it. But, you know, I use the word effective loosely. They're only so, so effective because it's striker, and striker's overpowered. Um, so, all that being said and done, I don't dislike Striker. I think that no matter what you do to Striker, it's always going to be a PvP powerhouse because of the security offered by the class design. But, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You just can't have that security and have the ridiculous damage output that Striker has. It's, it's unreasonable to have both. It's out there. It's too much. Um, so to expand upon the fighting strikers bit, and this is this is all very tentative because it depends on what striker you're fighting, what tactics they prefer, um, and and um, whether or not they lag. This is a case where that really does matter. Not that it's necessarily an excuse for losing or quitting, but it does matter whether or not they lag here. Um, if you were playing a melee character, uh, the best thing you can do is stay above 
them or below them. You're not really more safe above them than you are below them because of their teleport. But you want to stay above or below them, but never, you know, on the same level as they are. They're going to win that fight every time. If you're playing a 3v3 on Elven and the Canavan team has a striker, and you do not have um, a Siren, that striker is going to take the upper platform immediately. They're going to get there, and even if you get there at the same time, you'll just be landing on the platform by the time that striker comes blazing in there, and he's going to just knock everything over and do a large amount of damage, and it's going to be a disaster for your team. Um, generally speaking. I mean, that's not that's guaranteed to happen every time, but it's probably what's going to happen. So, you don't want to be on the same level as the striker. Unless um, a PK is a good counter to striker because of the invincibility frames. Jin is not because it doesn't have the damage output to match striker. PK, after it's nerfed, it's, it's questionable. Um, I think it can still do it. It's just going to take a lot of skill on the PK's part. Um, Liar is probably the single best counter. I can beat next to striker four out of five times with AR. It's just you break their momentum and then they have no momentum and they're not going to be nearly as lethal as they are normally. So that's the strongest way to do it. And then there's Arme, although Arme is generally pretty squishy, dangerous to fight a striker with. There's no real guaranteed method to fighting a striker. You're just going to it's trial and error, what works for you, what works against that class. So it's kind of up to you to figure that one out. Um, that's all I got, and uh, I'll show this to everyone because I'm tired of hearing people complain about strikers. Yes, they're overpowered, I know, but there are ways to fight them. So uh, that's it. Like, subscribe, etc., etc.